The human body is rarely ever stationary. In fact, our bodies are designed to constantly move. It's incredible if you think about all the dynamic movements that are routinely performed by the body. To easily describe and denote the direction of body movements, we use a special set of terms in anatomy. Some of the terms are explained in our previous video. Go check it out. Let's start off by having a look at the upper limbs first. The movement of the body parts, which involves bending or a decrease in the angle between two bones in the same joint, is termed flexion. When the reverse happens, or the movement causes an increase in the angle between those bones or causes a straightening effect, we call it extension. Not only the upper limb, these movements are also similarly performed by the knee joint and the digit in our hands. Moreover, our feet are capable of moving in two types of flexion movement. The first is called dorsiflexion, and it occurs when we walk uphill, so the front of the foot is lifted, where the angle between the dorsal or upper feet and the shin is decreased. The second occurs as we tread downhill or stand on our toes, and it's called plantar flexion, where the angle between the plantar or sole of our feet and shin decreases. From your neck, from the natural position which is directing the gaze anteriorly, Flexion means lowering the gaze so the chin may or may not reach the chest. Extension means directing the gaze to the sky. Don't forget the sunglasses! Now, if the limbs move away from the median plane of the body, this would be termed abduction. Oppositely, a movement that would be performed towards the plane would be called adduction. In the digits, these terms are used similarly, but with different reference points. The abduction of the digits refers to the spreading of the fingers apart, away from the neutrally positioned middle finger. Whereas adduction would be the opposite, by bringing the spread finger towards the middle fingers. If our upper limb performs the flexion, abduction, extension, and adduction simultaneously from any starting point in that sequence, the circular movement resulting would be referred to as circumduction. Other than those movements, some body parts can also perform a rotational movement by turning or revolving along the longitudinal axis. In the case of the neck, it can perform rotation by facing both to the left and right. The upper limb can rotate on the shoulder, so the anterior surface of the limb comes closer to the median plane. It will be referred to as medial or internal rotation. But if the rotation takes the anterior surface away from the median plane, it will be called lateral or external rotation. A special term is used for the rotation of the forearm on the proximal radial ulnar joint. The shoulder and elbow should be kept in place. The rotation of the forearm, which results in the radius and ulna forming an X and the palm facing posteriorly, is called pronation, whereas the rotation in the opposite direction, so the radius and ulna return to position and the palm facing anteriorly are termed supination. A helpful memorization tip would be to remember that, for a nation to drink soup, the palm must be supinated. But if your forearm is pronated, then you are more prone to spilling it. A movement which causes the body part to move further anteriorly from the frontal plane is called protrusion. When retraction occurs, the body part moves posteriorly, closer to the frontal plane. The examples are our mandibles, lips and tongue. The mandible is also capable to depress or move inferiorly and elevate or move superiorly, such as when we bite into some tasty vegetables. Move on to your feet. When the heel is locked in place and the foot is tilted to the lateral side, it's referred to as inversion. While in eversion, the foot is tilted to the median plane. While our body is certainly capable of performing those many movements, it is still limited in some aspects, mainly by our joints. The type of movement that exceeds the capacity of a joint is called hyperextension or hyperflexion. If this happens, it will cause severe damage to the joint and the structure around it. So, be careful when you make your movements. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.